Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this super cool Gottlieb Street Fighter 2 pinball machine for a while now. We had a customer bring us this and uh, it just had all kinds of little weird issues going on and he wanted us to work through it and get everything working right. So we did a video where we tracked down uh, a, um, a strange switch issue that we had in the switch matrix and uh, go check that out if you haven't already. We did a video where we did a bunch of the the lighting problems and just minor stuff uh, and we did a video where the spinning flipper at the top uh, the motor wasn't working right. So, uh, we also worked on this little LED display here and we've got it up where it'll start a game but it just does some weird stuff so for instance every once in a while it blows the fuse on the right flipper what's that all about and then uh, from time to time uh, it'll say shoot again right in the middle of the ball or something so what's that all about so there, there's some switch stuff still going on stuff but I think it's all mainly stuff that's misadjusted things like that we also have some cosmetic stuff we need to do to it uh, we've ordered some parts and things like that so we're gonna see what we can do to get this thing nice and playable so the first thing I'm gonna check out is the like I said the right flipper the fuse is blown so let's see if we can or it's not working so I assume the fuse is blown let's see if we can figure out why it's doing that he mentioned before that it did it to him too so uh, we'll see if we can figure out uh, what what exactly is causing that so that's fuse F20 which is the right flipper and it is definitely blown so that's twice now that's blown so let's see if we can figure out why that would be Okay, folks, so we are testing the end of stroke switch on the flipper. So I looked in the schematics, and the fuse for the right flipper only powers the right flipper. So there is power that runs to the fuse that runs to all the other fuses. So anything behind that fuse can't possibly be screwed up or you'd have other fuses blowing. And then the flipper, after it gets past this, connects to the, the return for the, the flipper on the bottom of the cabinet. And that flipper fuse is not blowing. So it's, it's pretty much, it has to be something right on the flipper. Now the flippers, when you hit the button, it pulls them in, and when they go all the way in, it opens up a switch. Let me, uh, let me show you the switch, and then we'll come back to this multimeter. Look how beautiful my multimeter is. That's a multimeter that's been used, people. So here's the flipper, you've got power running here, or here, <laughs> one of them, one of them's power, and uh, uh, whenever, the, whenever the flipper is juiced up, it throws power through here, and then there is a wire that comes down here and connects to a switch, and then the other side of the switch runs up and connects to here, okay? And then from here to here is a winding around the coil. So you have one winding from here around the coil to here, and one winding from here around the coil to here. So when you, when the switch is closed, like it is right now, there is a wire connected to the switch and then to the other side of the switch to here, which effectively shorts out this winding. So it's like there is a connection between here and here that's not a long winding. The longer the winding is, the more resistance it has, and the weaker it would make a flipper, right? So by shorting these two together, you have a little short, and then this winding from here to here, and that's what makes the coil pull in, the plunger, right? It gives it its snappiness. And it's very powerful because it's only this winding here. It's almost a direct short, and then a, a little short here. Well, what happens is when the thing gets all the way down, it opens up that switch. Now the switch is opened, and the paw just turns around, and it opens the switch. Okay, when it opens the switch, you no longer have a short from here to here. And so now there is a wire from here to here that's really long, and then a wire from here to here that's really long, and it makes the flipper weaker. So it's supposed to be weak when it's all the way up, because you don't need it to throw the ball, you're just holding the ball. So you want it to be weak, and the reason you want it to, to go weak after it goes up is so that it won't blow fuses. 
because if if the thing just stays powered, it'll 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 suck so much amperage that it blows the fuse. And so it, it takes a two and a half amp fuse, and that's what the gentleman had in there. So all of that was cool. So if you measure between here and here, you are measuring across your switch. Okay, so check this out. So I've got it set on the resistance setting, the ohmses, and if I check across that switch on those two pins that we were just talking about, so we get 0.3, so it's almost a dead short. My meter is about 0.2 off as well, by the way. So that's the resistance across the switch because the switch is cl is closed. So they're you know the two blades are touching. Now if I open up the switch, boop, boop, the switch is opened, but it's still connected. So even though I physically see the switch open, the two wires are still shorted together. So that's why it's blowing the fuse. Whenever the, the flipper gets all the way up, it doesn't open up that secondary winding. Okay, or add in that secondary winding. Okay, so let's do it on the other side. So this is on the left one that does not blow the fuse. So across the two switches, I mean the two wires on the switches, we're down to 0.1. So it's pretty, it's a dead short across those wires. But when the, when the flipper pulls in, it opens the switch up. And now you see there is a 200 ohm coil wrapped around that flipper coil. It has, so each flipper coil has two coils. So I'm going to do it another way, okay? So if you go across the two outside ones, well, I don't even know if that will work like that. I think it will. Yeah, it will work like that. Okay, if you go across the two outside ones, the resistance is 4 ohms. That's because the two the, from from the out from the right uh, lug to the middle is a dead short right now. It's zero ohms, and then from the middle lug to the left is a second winding, and it's only four ohms. Very powerful. So that bam, it's going to hit that damn thing quick, and that's why you get the where you slap the back of the game with the flipper. That's how you want it. You want them snappy. Okay, so then it you the flipper bam pulls up and it opens up the switch. So it adds in the other 200 ohm coil because now that switch is open. And so you've got 204 ohms across it now, which is weak. You can hold that with power across it all day long and it will not burn the coil up. So normally whenever you're blowing fuses, it's because that end of stroke switch isn't, either the coils just completely burn up or that end of stroke switch isn't working right. So on this particular one, the end of stroke switch isn't working right. So we got to figure out what the problem is with it um, and just see what we're looking at. Okay, so if you look down inside the flipper stack, the fuse, the stack there, see that crap on the black spacers? That may be metal shavings from the contacts and sometimes that stuff's conductive. If it's metal, it's de definitely conductive, but if it's thick enough, that might do it. So I'm going to clean that off. And then if you look, they have this cap on here too. It's like a suppression cap or whatever. It's so it doesn't arc. And so they've got one side of the cap connected to one blade and one side of the cap connected to the other blade. So if that cap is shorted together, it would do the same thing. So basically whenever that opens, either the dust down there on that black spacer is keeping it connected and conductive or the yellow cap is keeping it conductive. Now look at the cap. It has a damaged spot right there. So it could be that that cap screwed up. But uh, I'll try cleaning off that switch first and see if that fixes it. And if that doesn't fix it, I'll just cut one side of the cap loose and then we'll see if that fixes it. Okay folks, let's try it. It's looking for a ball still. There we go. Ready. We're good again. It was the capacitor. So that capacitor was actually shorted. When I cut the uh, when I cut the lead off of it uh, and measured across the things, now my short's gone. 
that capacitor is just to suppress the spark that, that happens when those contacts touch. You can actually play it without it, but long term you want that thing on there because uh, it'll make the points last longer. So I went ahead and ordered some more. Whenever we get them in, we'll put one on it. It's a 2.2 UF, 2.2 microfarad capacitor, uh, 200 volt. So, uh, and it just goes right across the two um, blades of the uh, end of stroke switch. So I think that's going to fix our flipper problem. So our next thing is uh, we're getting some issues where right in the middle of the ball it'll say shoot again. So let's just see. So I'm just going to shoot it and let's see. I'm going to watch the screen and let's say, see if it says shoot again before the ball falls in the out lane. Late. Late. All right, so the ball drained. Same player shoots again, okay. But it didn't do it till, same player shoots again. Didn't we hear something down here though? All right. Hard to play with one hand. Okay, ball drain. Ready, set, shoot. It's late. Late. Okay, the ball's draining. Ready, set, shoot. Early. But it did it when it drained, so I don't know. It must just... It can't tell that the ball has been shot. It still thinks that the ball's in the out hole. I don't know why that would be. So there's a switch down here that's acting up or something. And once it does that, it basically doesn't even look for it on the play field. It thinks it's sitting here, maybe? Let's see if I hit this, what happens. Nothing. Let's hit this. Nothing. See, it won't read any switches right now. Hmm. That's very strange. Everything basically locks up because it doesn't know where the ball is. So typically when it does that, there's You've got some kind of problem on the trough switch, but I don't, I don't know. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to mess with it a little bit and see what I can figure out. Okay, so I've moved the apron off of it. It can't short. I can't short the way it's hanging like that. Uh, so we're looking at the trough. So basically, on a, they're all different on every machine, but on a System 3, there is a switch here. <laughs> that was neat. There is a switch here that can tell when the third ball is on it. So when the third ball goes up, it lands on that switch. It was bent down a little bit, so I bent it back up and made sure that when the third ball is laying there, it's right on top of the switch. So see, like right now, it thinks there's two, two balls because that's not being hit. So if I drop this in, it should kick it up. And then when I drop in the fourth one, it shouldn't because it'll know there's a third one, right? Okay, so now it knows there's three because it's sitting on that switch. And then this one, when it lands in the out hole, it should know that not to shoot it over. Right? Now, if I was to make one pop out, it would open that switch and then shoot the, the next one up. And we're in game over, by the way. So, it, basically, that's how it counts it. It knows there's three, 
Now it knows this one's here too. It knows there's three, and then it, it'll. Girls can't fight. If if you uh, if you try to start the game, it's going to look for the ball because it's not going to know where this fourth ball is. But now it knows if it lands on the thing. So I bent this one up a little bit too. Bent that one up a little bit too so that it can see the switch is good. And hopefully that'll that'll fix that. Now I played a game and uh, it didn't. Uh, we didn't. Ha I didn't have any problem where it lost a ball or anything. But found another problem. Oh, and by the way, the flipper has been working fine. Found another problem where the car crunch doesn't work. When you start that part of the game, the flipper doesn't work. It just doesn't do anything. You hit the button, nothing happens. But that's also a really simple circuit. So let's look in the manual and we'll see how that's supposed to work. Lower playboard flipper. Okay. So we need to look at the end of stroke switch. If it's open, oh, I didn't mention that earlier when we were messing with the flipper. If your end of stroke switch is open, when you hit the button, it's not it's not strong enough to flip the 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 uh, plunger all the way in. It can hold it in with that 220 ohms resistance, but it can't actually flip it. It'll be real weak or it won't move at all. So if that switch is open, that the end of stroke switch that is supposed to open when it goes all the way in, if that thing is not touching, the flipper won't even work. Okay, so we've got to check that, and if you look over here, it has its own fuse. I've checked the fuse, and it's fine. And then over on this side, it runs into the same wiring as the top right flipper. It says bottom right flipper, but the flipper on top of the play field, the regular right flipper. Uh, everything's the same from here on, and that flipper's working fine. Right? Now, I know earlier when I was fixing that one, Part of my justification for there not being over a problem over here is that I said that one was working fine. Hey, I thought it was, people. I didn't know. I didn't know, but now I know. This one's working fine. This one's just not working, right? Uh, so, what do we have here? Huh, that's the switch. It says S. So, basically, the way they have it set up is when you play the game, they don't want every time you hit the flipper for this flipper to work, too. So they have a relay built into the game that only turns on when the bottom play field is supposed to be activated. So that's going to be our problem. So there, we're not getting power to this flipper either because of the end of stroke switch or because the S relay never pulls in. So we need to check the S relay and see if it sends the voltage, the 48 volts, over to the, the flipper like it's supposed to. So the way you can do that is you can uh, start a game with the play field up hold the S relay in and just see if the damn flipper works. That'd be one way to do it. But, you know. <laughs> so I'll mess with it. You, you can also check voltage on it. See what voltage is on one side of the switch and then hold the, the S relay in and see if the voltage is now on the other side of the switch. See if that puts voltage over on the flipper, etc, etc. So let me look into it and we'll see. I'm sure that'll, I'm sure that'll have something to do with it. Okay, folks, so right at the top of the play field is the S relay. I say top, it's actually the bottom, but we got it up, so it's the top, right? That's the S relay. So when that pulls in, it sends power to this flipper, right? So if you look, there are two little contacts in there. Can I get it even brighter? Will it go even brighter? Who knows? Who knows? I think that's all she's got, people. But you can see that, can't you? So see how the contacts are? So when I look at the web, the cobwebs on the <laughs> on the wire. You see the contacts, right? I am in I am in the relay, the solenoid test, so I'm gonna pull in the relay so you can see. Did you see that patheticness? So when this relay pulls in, that's all it does. Look at that, it don't even touch. That ain't gonna make it. Okay, so if you look, the problem is, is that this thing will just barely move when it pulls in. It shouldn't be like that.
Okay. So if you look down here in the bottom of the cabinet, there's other relays. I've got the power off. If you look at, say, this one, see how it travels farther? So it just works better. This one's like this, and it just moves just a little bit. It should travel farther. And they're all like that. And they're all the same part, right? And it's just like an old EM pinball machine, how the relays work on it. Well, if you look, the, the what controls the travel is this little blade here. So I can just barely move in. So is that blade bent? Well, no. Look, look at the backing plate. It's fine. But look at this backing plate. The whole damn relay is bent. So if you bend this back more flat, you'll bend this away and this will allow this to move more. And that should fix it. So I'm just going to like, because I'm so damn swole. Look at that. You see that muscle pop up? Look at that. I'm just going to grab this damn thing and bend it back straight. And then that should fix it. By the way, stuff like that, that's the type of stuff where uh, the play field gets dropped or, you know, something can get mad. Like, remember how this had that little nick in it? Our, our, our bad uh, thing? That may have been damaged where it hit something. So there could have been something under there and it fell. This play field is really heavy. And it's got all this jewelry on the back of it here. All this stuff. Look, it's even got the whole car assembly hanging off of it. So look, I've got it pushed all the way up. Right, and if I let go of it, sometimes it'll stay, but just the slightest little thing will make it fall. Right, so that's probably just been bent at some point. So I'm just going to bend, you know, I think it, you can tell that this is the part that's bent. So it's not, it should be more like that. So I'm going to bend this back, get this where it's level with the thing. And that ought to fix it. All right, so I adjusted it. Let's see if I can get it where you can see it. Can you see it? I think you can see it. I think that's going to do it, people. I think we've got it now. Let's try it in the game. Your All right, we're going to try it out. I won. <laughs> it's working, people. I'm a wiener. So this is the capacitor that was on the flipper that was shorted. Uh, it says 2.2K, but capacitance markings are different than resistor markings. So on a resistor, 2.2K would mean 2200 ohms resistance. But this isn't resistance. This is capacitance. So it means 2.2 uh, microfarad. And the K is uh, it's the tolerance. So it means 10%. So it's, it's somewhere between... 1.9 and 2.5 or so um, uh, microfarad capacitance. Not to be confused with 2200 microfarads. Um, <laughs> it's only 2.2, okay? So that's what that means. So that's the old one. It's shorted. We got in some new ones. They're a little bit smaller. But they do the same thing. Now you got a little bit of a thing where the lead can touch something if you're not careful. So you got to put a little heat shrink tubing on it. You can get the ones that actually have the uh, the leads covered, but they're a little harder to find. But just a 2.2 microfarad capacitor will do the same thing. It is the same thing. I mean, it's what's on there. It's 2.2 microfarad <laughs> capacitor. And it's uh, 200 volts, but of course, something higher than that would work too. So 250 volts would work fine. All right, so we got that. That's no longer shorted. Our flipper should be good. Uh, I've also got in, I, I got in the three targets that we disconnected on the earlier video. Um, I got in the smart switch ones. So we'll go ahead and put those in, and that'll be about the last thing that we have to fix on the game. We just have cosmetic stuff after that. 
So these three targets, if you watched the earlier video, uh, they're supposed to be smart switches. They're not, they're just regular targets. And they're just white ones. The, the uh, uh, customer didn't like the way they looked, so he wanted to go with red, yellow, red, the original style. I think the originally, though, it was red, white, red. I may be wrong about that. But we're going to go red, yellow, red with smart switches. I got them in, so I'm going to swap them out. All right, so we got some brand new start uh, smart switches. They're smart because they have this little board in there, and you don't ever have to adjust them. They just figure it out. Um, so you can see right now they're actually touching. Doesn't matter. You don't you don't have to adjust them at all. They come with a little connector on them, but whenever they changed them out to make them regular switches, they took the connector off the wires. So I can't just plug it in. And this is like a strange one, so I don't have any of these. So, what you can do is, you can uh, take the connector off and clean out those holes. Two of them connect together and the other two connect together. They did it like that because sometimes this mounts this way or this way or just different ways. And then also, uh, the reason that, uh, the place you can get these is from the Pinball Resource. They're really cool. They've got all kinds of parts for any Gottlieb game and all of the System 3 stuff. They still have all of the smart switches and all that. Whenever Gottlieb went out of business, they ended up with all of their old stock that they're slowly selling off. And so all of these can still be got. Go to the Pinball Resource. They're one of our, pinballresource.com, pbresource.com. It's one of our favorite places to buy stuff. I just think it's neat how they've got the original stuff still sitting there. These, these switches are about $11, something like that. Um, but the purpose of them was they were supposedly, they would never need adjusting or even cleaning or anything. But what happens is over the years they break or something, like the, the face gets messed up, and so they somebody ends up swapping it with another one. Um, but might as well put the right one in, right? So I'm soldering the wires into the little board where they go, and then we'll see how it ended up looking. Okay, folks, so we got them mounted in there. Three new switches, ain't that sweet. Okay, so all that's left now is to uh, try to play it and see if they work during the game. Okay, folks, much better. Boy, that looks nice. Let's see if we can tell that one of them got hit. I missed it. I missed it. Oh no. Well, I didn't hit it that time. Should we cheat? Let's cheat. Well, I'll try one more ball, see if I can do it with the flipper. Just the left flipper, you know. I almost hit it. I didn't quite make it. Same player shoots again, though. You know, I didn't make enough. They felt, they felt pity on me. Oh, I missed. Mm. Might get another same player shoots again. Yep. If you don't get enough points, they give it back to you. Use the flipper to smash the car. I win. Of course I do. I thought I had it that time. Maybe not. Okay. This time we're going to cheat. We're going to cheat, people. Oh, I hit it. Let's see here. 31,910,000. Boy, I get a little bit of points for it. They're all working, people. They're all working. Very cool. Oh, Chun Lee said, get that out of here. <laughs> the game has ended, but the challenge remains. All right, folks, so I think we've got all the electronic stuff fixed. Now we just have to do some cosmetic stuff. So we'll do that in a separate video. We've got to put that play field in. We've got to touch up the side rails a little bit, a little bit of the side art. I'm going to clean the play field off. Uh, we've got to put the back glass back in, all that stuff. So. We'll do that on the next one. Make sure to leave your comments below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. We didn't have to do that. 
We're just doing it out of the kindness of our heart. The least you can do is subscribe to us and give us a thumbs up. It doesn't even cost you anything. But if you do want to spend some money, go to our website. Go to... <laughs> huh? What? Go to lionsarcade.com and it has prices, pictures, descriptions of all of our pinball machines, arcade games, and jukeboxes that we have for sale at the moment. Even if it's years from now, we keep it up to date, folks. There's also a parts page on there. If you check that out, we have links to some of the stuff we use whenever we do repairs. And then also we have uh, some of our like t-shirts and things like that. So if you're interested in supporting the channel in that way, we appreciate it. Some of you folks have been out wearing our t-shirts on the beach. They sent pictures to prove it. Boy, that was cool. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, check that out at lionsarcade.com. And finally, last but not least... Make sure to check out My Brother Donnie. If you don't know about My Brother Donnie, he is literally my brother. We have another channel here on YouTube called the My Brother Donnie channel, where uh, if you like watching us work on these old pinball machines, you may enjoy watching us work on old buildings. We've got a couple uh, little buildings that we're helping to renovate. Well, we're completely renovating ourselves uh, in the small town near here to help revitalize downtown. So we're fixing those up. Go check it out. We'll see you on the next video.